Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go over two worked examples to show you how to do problems involving explosions. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question one says that a gun of mass five kilograms has a 10 kilogram bullet in it. Before the gun is fired, they are both at rest. The bullet is fired at 200 meters per second. Part A says to sketch the situation. So we've got a mass of 5.01 kilograms, that's the 10 gram bullet, which is the same as 0.01 kilograms, added on to the 5 kilogram mass. And that's our gun and bullet combined, which are stationary at 0 meters per second. So that's our before situation, and then after they're going to explode apart, and we end up with the 5 kilogram mass for the gun moving to the left at a speed of V1. And then we've got our mass of 0.01 kilogram, our bullet, which is moving to the right with a speed of 200 meters per second. Part B says, what is the total momentum before the gun fires? Well, if you look at the situation, we've got a speed of zero meters per second to begin with. So remember, momentum is the mass times the speed. So if we've got a speed of zero, then we're gonna have a total momentum of zero as well. So we can just prove this by putting the numbers into the expression for total momentum before, which is m1 plus m2 times u. So all I've done there is instead of writing m1 u1 plus m2 u2, because we've only got one object, we've got our m1 plus m2, which is the two combined, so the 5.01 kilograms, and timesing by the u of zero meters per second, this gives us five plus 0 0.01 times zero, which is zero kilogram meters per second. Part C says to find the velocity of the gun as it recoils. So when the gun fires the bullet, the two explode apart and the gun is going to move backwards to the left as it recoils and we want to know the velocity. So we're gonna use the principle or law of conservation of momentum to do this. So we have that total momentum before equals total momentum after. Writing down our expression now for explosions, we have zero equals m1 v1 plus m2 v2, and we can write this all the time for explosions because it's always gonna be the case that we have the total momentum before it being zero when the object is at rest to begin with. So substituting in our numbers, we get zero equals five v1 plus 0 0.01 times 200. And so taking this expression over to the left-hand side, and then swapping the sides over so we have v1 on the left hand side we get 5v1 equals minus 2 and dividing both sides by 5 now gives us v1 equals minus 0 0.4 meters per second now notice that we should expect a negative answer because the gun was moving backwards to the left and we are assuming that motion to the left is negative and motion to the right is positive so we do expect a negative answer here Question two says that uranium nucleus has a mass of 238 AMU, which is atomic mass units. It decays by emitting an alpha particle of mass 4 AMU, leaving a thorium nucleus of mass 234 AMU behind. So there's our thorium nucleus, and there's our alpha particle, and that's our after the situation. It then says if the recoil velocity of the thorium nucleus is 1.97 times 10 to the 5 meters per second, which is shown there moving to the left, Calculate the velocity with which the alpha particle is emitted. So we want to know the velocity of this thing over here. And it, we're told that one atomic mass unit is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And that will let us convert between AMU and kilograms, which is what we want. So as always, we're gonna sketch our before and after the situation. So before the situation, we've got our uranium nucleus, which is 238 AMU. And that's at zero meters per second because it's stationary. After the situation, we've then got pretty much what we're shown here. So that is our thorium nucleus at 234 AMU, and that's going to move to the left at 1.97 times 10 to the five meters per second. And then we've got our alpha particle of 4 AMU moving to the right at a velocity of V2, which we don't know yet. So what we want to do with this question is first of all, convert all of the masses from atomic mass units to kilograms, because that's gonna help us later on. So note that one AMU is 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, so that will allow us to do our conversion. So for the uranium nucleus, first of all, we have 238 AMU is equal to 238 times 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27, which if you put into your calculator, gives you 3.95 times 10 to the minus 25 kilograms. So that's us got the mass of the uranium nucleus in kilograms now. If we do the same now for the thorium nucleus, we have 234 AMU is equal to 234 times the 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27, which gives us 3.88 times 10 to the minus 25 kilograms. 
And lastly, for the alpha particle, we have 40MU, which if we do 4 times 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27, should give you 6.64 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. This mass is smaller than these two, but that's expected because it's a smaller alpha particle. We then need to use the principle or law of conservation of momentum. So we have total momentum before equals total momentum after. Writing down this in expression form for explosions, we have 0 equals m1v1 plus m2v2. And substituting in our numbers, we get 0 equals 3.88 times 10 to the minus 25 times the minus 1.97 times 10 to the 5, so that's for our thorium nucleus, plus 6.64 times 10 to the minus 27 V2. So notice that we didn't actually need the mass of our uranium nucleus there, just because our left hand side was 0 for total momentum before. So what we can do now is multiply these two together and then take it over to the left hand side and then if we swap both sides to get V2 on the left hand side we get 6.64 times 10 to the minus 27 V2 equals 7.64 times 10 to the minus 20. Dividing both sides now by the 6.64 times 10 to the minus 27 you should get an answer of V2 equals 1.15 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. Notice the positive sign here because the alpha particle was moving to the right. That's all for this video folks, I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.